Hi guys! So today I'm going to show you a little bit how you can create a bold lip and a defined lip and I'm going to show you how you can draw the lips to try and make them as symmetrical as possible even though this is quite difficult because all of our faces are asymmetrical some have more uh, symmetrical lips than others I do not so lips have always been a challenge for me and I can never get them quite right so I'm going to give you the best tips I have on how to do that but before we get into that though it has been brought to my attention that I haven't really properly introduced myself I've kind of said my name and where I live and where I'm from uh, in bits and pieces I should probably be better at introducing myself at the start of the video. My name is Tale, I'm 27 years old and I'm a makeup artist from the west coast of Norway. I finished my makeup education in 2000... I finished my makeup education in 2013 and I have been working as a makeup artist ever since. Fun fact, I have two hairless cats and I love them to death, they're my children. If there's anything else you would like to know about me, please don't hesitate to ask. It's very difficult to come up with things to tell people about yourself when you're not really talking to people, you're talking to a camera. Um, but yeah, just ask me if there's anything you would like to know. So now we can get on with the actual tutorial and I'm going to show you a little bit how you can do a bold lip uh, and how you should prep the lips before starting to get the best result. So the first thing I like to do, especially when doing bold lips where the texture of the skin might show more, is that I like to scrub the lips. Uh, I'm using a scrub by MAC. It comes in a jar like this. Mine has been used a lot, so the writing and everything has come off. They have different smells and there's obviously different brands with different scrubs as well. Uh, I really like this. It smells really nice. The only downside is that it's not edible. I would love for it to be edible because it's so, so nice. Mm. Mm -mm. So I don't really take a lot. I take a little bit on my finger like that. And then you just do circular motions. So now that you've peeled all the skin of your lips, you can start removing the scrub. I guess this goes without saying, but you're not supposed to scrub the skin off if it's if it burns or if it's painful. You're probably scrubbing a bit much, a bit too hard. So it's not supposed to be painful. It's just to get off excess skin on the lips, because sometimes we get dry patches um, on the lips. Or we have dead skin that is nice to remove, because uh, the product or the lipstick, whatever type of product you use, if it's a gloss lipstick, whatever, uh, will usually stick to areas where you have more texture. Uh, especially if you're using matte products and li liquid lipsticks and things like that. And usually I start with applying a lip balm at the beginning of my makeup, like before I really start doing anything. So this can really soak into the lips before uh, I do anything with them so that when I go in with a scrub the dead skin will be a lot easier to get off and your lips will just be a lot more moisturized and nice and prepped for for product. After applying the scrub I'm just taking what's left on my sponge and kind of dabbing that over the lips just to to kind of soften the color a little bit so the lipstick will show through a bit better. After I've done all of that, I will apply a lip primer. What I like about this is that it's moisturizing as well as it's going to kind of even out the texture of the skin a little bit and it will also make the product you put over top glide a bit better because sometimes when you have nothing on the lips, you have no moisture, no nothing, it's, especially when you're drawing with the lip liner, it's going to kind of grip onto the lips and it can be a bit uncomfortable and difficult to use. So I'm putting this over first. Uh, mine is almost empty. I should buy a new one. Um, this is just a lip primer by MAC. It's kind of like a lip balm in the way you apply it um, or like a chapstick. And so you just put it on the entire lip in a thin layer. And I also apply it on the outside of the lip as well, just like on the edge, because then you will avoid the lipstick bleeding out as much. 
Now that the primer has dried down a bit, uh, we can continue with the lip liner. You should let the primer sit for about 30 seconds before you continue. So I'm going to show you the best ways of lining up your lips before you apply the lipstick. And uh, so I'll be using a bright pink today. So I find this really difficult because my lips are very asymmetrical. You can probably see it a bit better when I talk, but one side is kind of slimmer than the other. But you can't really see it when I have my mouth shut. So I will usually uh, draw them in a way that looks nice uh, with my mouth closed. So what I like to do first is define the middle first. Then I draw a line. in the middle and then I draw an X in the middle and sometimes I try to measure with my pencil if the height of the highest points are somewhat similar. In this case it seems like they are. One thing that's kind of difficult with this though is that there's a lot of things that I feel look right uh, when I'm doing it in the mirror, but sometimes when I see it in pictures, I can see things a bit more clearly because you see it mirrored. And so doing lips and liners and things that are supposed to be really even or brows even um, can be really hard to get right. So after that, I'm going to um, do the corners of my mouth. And in my case, my lip actually goes here, but the corner of my mouth is here so I kind of cut this corner so I fill in the lip all the way to the corner of my lip. Because if I were to follow the shape of only my lip uh, it would look a bit weird if I were to stop before the corner of my mouth. At this point, this might look a bit weird, but it's a nice technique to try and get your lips a bit more symmetrical. Because by creating these starting points, uh, it's easier to just uh, draw the line in between them. And usually by doing that, the lips will end up being more symmetrical. And if there's anything else you need to do to make them even more symmetrical, it's usually a matter of small changes, not really a lot of changes. So you, now you can just connect the dots. I usually like smile just a little bit just to tighten the skin a bit so it's easier to draw. And sometimes after doing this, if I want my lips to be a little bit fuller, uh, I will go outside of the nice shape that we've already made just to make it a bit fuller. And then because I'll be using a very similar shade of lipstick, I will fill in the entire lip uh, with this lip pencil just to make it last a bit longer. If you were to want to make your lipstick a little bit darker, you could use a darker lip pencil and fill in the entire lip first uh, and then go over with the lipstick that you want if you want just a little bit more depth to it. I do that a lot with the lipstick I'll be using today. Sometimes I use more of like a plum lip liner uh, to give it a bit more depth. And sometimes I might not even fill in the entire lip. I might just do around the edges so I get uh, a more plumping effect because it'll be lighter in the middle. And I just tighten my lips to fill them in easier. One trick that I learned in makeup school that is supposed to help to check if the shape is somewhat symmetrical is to pout your lips. And now before I go in with the lipstick, I like to kind of clean up the shape a little bit. You can save this for last. I just like to go in once before I put my lipstick on and then once after lipstick, depending on how sharp you want the lines. But I want to, to just uh, clean it up a little bit. And for this, I just used the um, wonky eyebrow pencil that I have. And I did this to tighten the line. Uh, 
Uh, sometimes if you're really worried you'll mess up the line if you're just going against it like this. You can place your brush at the edge of the line like this and then pull downward. It might be a bit more time consuming but it's easier to avoid mistakes that way. So now that I think I've gotten my lips as even as I can get them, I'm going to continue to put my lipstick on. I mentioned that I feel my lips are quite asymmetrical and I'm going to show you why because you can really see it when I'm wearing lipstick. You might not be able to see it as well when my uh, mouth is closed, but when I'm talking, you can really see that this part here is thinner. And so for me to get my lips totally perfect is just really, really, really difficult. It's just a struggle. So the lipstick I'll be using is probably my favorite pink shade ever. It's called Ambrosial and it's a Lip Tensity lipstick by MAC. It looks like this. So now that you're going in with your lipstick, what I would recommend you do to avoid messing up the nice lip liner you've done is to place the lipstick uh, as close to the line as you can. Like this. Especially here where you want the heart shape. And if you want the heart shape, and draw inwards. And then to avoid messing up your shape in general, you can continue the same way I've done now. Again, a bit more time consuming. Usually I just fill in uh, everything that's not close to the line and then I do what I did uh, here on the rest of the lip. If you find it easier, you can go in with a lip brush instead. I prefer to just uh, use the lipstick straight from the bullet when I'm applying to myself. So after you've applied your lipstick, what you can do if you need to is go in with your lip liner in places where you feel like there's something you need to correct and adjust the shape if you need to. I don't really feel like there's much adjusting to do, but I will be going in a little bit with the foundation just around the edges to make it a little bit more sharper than I have now. So the lips are basically done. What you could do if you wanted to is to add some gloss. Uh, but there's already a bit of shine to this lipstick already, so I won't be doing that. At this point, I think I'm satisfied with the way the lips look. Uh, lips are a real struggle for me. I'm never happy with them because my lips are so asymmetrical that I, I feel no matter how hard I try and how how long I'm working with the lips, I just feel like it's, it's, just, it's just never as nice as it could be. Um, but yeah, these are some great tips either way, uh, and I really hope they helped. Uh, if there's anything you would like to know or uh, you want to know more about what I've used or what I have on my face in general, there will be more information in the description bar. When I'm doing bold lips, this is usually the way I like to look. I don't like to have a lot on my eyes. I might have some eyeliner on or something, but usually I, I let the lips be the main focus. So this is the look done. So that was it for today and I hope I'll see you next time. Bye.